welcome back to the channel. For those who are new here, my name is Maurice Jr. And what I do is I strive to make content that connects with individuals, families, and communities in meaningful and positive ways from success stories to financial literacy. You'll find something here that actually entertains you or piques your interest. Now today I kind of want to do a quick recap of the books this year that I have read and the ones that actually have the most impact. Um, I tend to get more value out of reading books um, versus the audio books because um, typically I'm not commuting anywhere much, but if I am, I am listening to either like an Eric Thomas or a um, Grant Stephan or different individuals of that nature, uh, Meet Cavins and, you know, different YouTube individuals out there. But specifically today, I want to cover the books that had the most impact on me this year. And I guess I'll go ahead and just dive into it. First book. First book. Um, 21 Qualities of a Leader by John Maxwell. Um, let's just say uh, the book gives you uh, a, a lot of oversight of your characteristics, of who you are, different things that nature. It gets, you, it gets you into a reflective mode. And these characteristics are something or these qualities as it relates to your character is something that you need to reflect on different things on nature. So quick, easy book, um, quick read, uh, only about 150 pages. Uh, if, if you're anything like me, I, I can't read long books, you know, so thus that's why you only have about 14 books here that I read for the year. Um, you know, but again, uh, John Maxwell's book, The Qualities of a Leader, great book, got me going there. Uh, tough times never last, but tough people do. Um, this one here, uh, the reason why I like this book is because, or well, what made me get it is because of title one. And then two, um, if, if you know anything about the last, you know, six to eight years, uh, of my life, uh, the last four have been pretty three to five years. Let's just say about three to five years have been really, uh, not, not tough from a totality, but just for my individual, the different things that I was struggling with. And um, as it relates to, you know, some personal things that I, I had going on, but all in all, tough times never last, but tough people do I promise you that. <laughs> you can negotiate anything. You can negotiate anything, man, by Herb Cohen. Now, quick story about this uh my wife my wife is uh, uh my wife is in a managerial role so she managed about a team of four to six individuals but what i noticed is that um her communication skills and actually how she negotiate different things wherever we will go so that was a skill that i wanted to acquire shout out my wife nadia thomas man i see you nadia glam but long story short uh you can negotiate anything so it's something that i wanted to develop in within myself as it relates to uh you know, just negotiating. So one thing I did not do, if that was your price, that was your price, you know, either gonna go for it or not. So I used to be real big on just, okay, um, that is what it is. However, um, it is some cases that, you know, you should be negotiating or you should say something back. And then when that person say, for example, if someone, if you was in a store and someone says, hey, this is $99 and you will say, hey, um, you know, I got, 85 for you and then once that person says something back meaning um okay maybe i could do it for i don't know 92 dollars now that the negotiation starts you know so it's best to just to practice long story short you can negotiate anything uh with something that uh you know a skill set that i wanted to acquire myself overall so that's something that i uh really enjoyed there uh this is the first book that i read in 2020 think and grow rich uh it's, it's so many different versions of it, but I like the Dennis Kimbrough one. He actually has so many great, he got a lot of content out there as it relates to um, um, just, just that next level thinking as, as it relates to your mindset and just having that transformational mindset as, re, as regards to developing wealth for your family. So Think and Grow Rich, but specifically the Black Choice one by Dennis Kimball and Napoleon Hill. Uh, this one right here just started getting the wheels turning early in the year because I had ideas of what I wanted to do. However, it wasn't until that I actually started um, reading that book that it gave me a different mindset as it relates to what I want to do for my family, like some, some tangible results. So um, when I wrote my goals down for last year, uh, maybe I'll pull out my journal so you can actually see that. 
Um, the next book is The Intelligent Investor. The Intelligent Investor. Uh, this book right here is just, uh, it, it gives you a, a mindset of, and another thing too, um, I, I said, you know, the last book was a quick read. The Think and Grow Rich is not a quick read. You know, the other three before that, those are quick reads. And when I say quick reads, meaning anything over uh, 250 pages, you can get that done in about, depending on how much time that you are spending, I would say about, if you're spending about 20 to 30 hours reading, you know, every now and then a week, you can get a book done about two, try to try to do two books a, a month and, you, and you'll see how you'll start changing and different things on nature as it reflects to, as it relates to you actually reacting or different things on nature as, you know, the type of titles that you read, the type of things that you watch, the type of things that you just, um, you know, pour into your mind overall. But The Intelligent Investor, this was another book by Benjamin Graham uh, that actually gave me another insight of, okay, I, I don't have a financial advisor. How can I, uh, you know, become better and streamlining different things that I have as it relates to the assets that I have, you know? So it made me start thinking about what assets that I want to leave for my family, you know, which one would be beneficial for myself, which one would benefit uh, as, as, as my family, different things on nature. Hence, you have the Thomas Investment Group, which is the TIG legacy. Legacy, leave each generation ahead of coming years. Shout out to the team, man. Shout out to the TIG. Um, another quick read is the proximity principle. This one right here is, uh, you know, is this one, this one relates to like jobs, you know, this is, this is as it relates to your career and doing the things that you love. So the proximity principle by Ken Coleman, me personally, I, I used it as a reference for the things that I want to manifest in my life. So uh, what I love about the book, and you can see I have a few bookmarks here. What I love about the book is at the end of each chapter, he gives you some reflective questions to think about as it relates to, again, where you want to go in life, what you want to do. Um, for me, my career or what I do don't feel like a job, you know, because it aligns with my dreams and goals. So I don't have a job. You know, the, the job that I, I would say that I have is making sure that I cater to my, my boys right now and my baby girl will be here in a day or two. So shout out Nadia again. <laughs> the proximity principle overall. OK, Ken Coleman great book. This one right here will help you, um, you know, develop a strategy of what type of career you want to have in your life. Because a lot of people take a lot of meaningful jobs, meaningless jobs in their life, and it doesn't, you know, create value or what they want to do, you know, long term, long term, and it kind of throws off, you know, people from stop dreaming and things of that nature, defining a purpose, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, seven habits of, um, you know, highly effective people here, okay? Another great book. Now, specifically, this book right here, it, it gives you a uh, overview of kind of like the, the mindset of what habits or self-discipline that you need to cultivate. Very similar to the book here. It aligns with the certain qualities, but the effective people and the people that who are well versed and have um, Let's just say, you know, like the Bill Gates and well, Bill Gates is a bad example right now just because of what's going on with him. But I hate the name drop. So I'll just say this. I hate the name drop. So the seven Hot habits of highly effective people is another book that actually, you know, gave me another stepping stone to ascend to that next level overall. Uh, you know, from an individual level, it it collectively required me to tap into my own mental and physical and spiritual resources uh you know that that actually in me you know what i mean so i know i may sound crazy uh which brings me to my next book that actually had me think about how i am consuming things all right so this one uh let me see if i can move it back here i got some reflective on this so the african holistic health this one right here is recommended by dick gregory so this one right here it covers so much it cover uh like herbs and how to eat right, the different vitamins that come from different foods and different things that nature. So if you watch my last video, or well, not my last video, but the video where I had with Dennis Cornell and he discussed his transition to being a vegan. And then I actually discussed how I went from, you know, just clean eating and transitioning from clean eating to more uh, supplemental eating uh, or doing supplements 
uh, as it relates to like herbal life. And then from herbal life, I became a vegetarian. And then from vegetarian, I started to get an understanding of what my body needs and the history or the background of my family and the different, uh, you know, diseases that was in our bloodline as it relates to uh, as it relates to like tuberculosis and different things like nature, diabetes, you know, all that kind of stuff that was in my bloodline. So um, I actually had to make sure I started taking care of myself uh, from a holistic standpoint, because if you go into the doctor, you get meds, different things like nature, you're going to be a, 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 I like to say, customer for that doctor for some time there, um, because of if you get a medication, you're just going to continue to do the medication. So you need to make sure you're looking at different alternatives. And this is a great book to actually um, have you think about that. But uh, yeah, great book, great read. Uh, Contagious. Um, Contagious was another book that I really enjoyed. Um, so always me being an analytical thinker, um, I always just look at why things are the way they, you know, why people do the things that they do, you know, why things can, you know, come about. So it, it gave me like specific actionable techniques for getting things done or the results that I want to see as it relates to if getting results from my different clients and different things that nature when I'm doing any kind of transformational coaching or anything of that nature, why people act the way they do, why they do the things that they do, why they catch on. So that's another book that I actually had. Uh, another book that actually, you know, made me start thinking about being debt free was the Dave Ramsey, the total money makeover. Um, I think I spoke to one of my guys, shout out Lamont Harvey. He actually was telling me about, uh, how he was doing his thing with the baby steps and different things like nature. But I knew that my wife and I collectively, we wasn't working on that portion myself. So when me being on a chapter 13 bankruptcy at that time, it was easier for me to say, okay, that debt is taken care of. I'm paying for that. However, let me make sure that I will never put myself in this situation again. So that Dave Ramsey, the total money makeover, he gives you the words or gives you the actionable plan, a tangible, smart plan to actually get things done. So I will highly encourage you, you know, to check out this book here if you want to, you know, build that financial muscle behind you and your family. Uh, the four hour work week, um, you know, reading it this year, it was, I don't want to say it was overrated, but, you know, Tim Ferriss, uh, this book right here, I really think that if you're really trying to get to the next level and you're only actually working four hours a week, it's feasible, okay? It's feasible, but I think if you're trying to turn that down and build, build generational wealth, this is not something that um, I will recommend, but I will recommend that you that you read it so you can get a foundation of how to look at old concepts of retirement and be able to build a life plan, like a, not life plan, but a, a long term goal that that you can accomplish. You know, by using this book here, it, it helps you escape the rat race and, and it helps you think about how you want to travel or what you want to do as it relates to your income, it gives you that 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 groundwork. But the four hour work week, uh, it's overrated, definitely overrated. Good to great um, people who are, um, let me see, okay, yeah. Good to great is another great book. Uh, it's, it's one of those books where um, if you are working in a Fortune 500 company and different things of that nature, you start to look at the culture, you start to look at business ideas, you start to look at different things of that nature as it relates to um, how and why things are, companies perform at the way they do. So you can just look at research as it relates to uh, like Coca-Cola and Tesla and Amazon and different things of that nature. It's the reason why people excel at what they do. So this is a good blueprint for, uh, you know, building your company, building your company. So like I said, back to the four hour work week, I maybe work four hours a week doing mortgage note investing. Okay. Which brings me to uh, my next book. This is the book that I hear that actually changed my life. Okay. It's buying, buying mortgage notes. So Jimmy, this kind of like the Bible for <laughs> this, the Bible. Well, people in my industry, they actually say this is the Bible for uh, mortgage note investing because everything is laid out it gave me everything that I read in these books this year, it gave me a totality of how and why people do different things in that nature. Like for example, in my old video, I speak about having a financial calculator. So 
if you have a financial calculator, you know, the 10 BII, you, you can actually pull this up and do the numbers on anything in life. No matter if you're about to finance a car, if you're financing a house, if you are taking credit out, you can figure out the terms, the interest, the amount of money that you would pay on it. Um, the first time that I use my, my after I learned how to use it, because it takes, it's a steep learning curve. I know it's just a simple calculator, but putting in the terms, the interest rate, different things of that nature, it takes time and you have to make sure you're understanding what you're calculating overall. But the book itself, Investing in Debt, this is the reason why I'm, uh, my family and I, well, specifically my wife and I, invest in paper. You know, we don't really buy real estate. You know, we, we buy our house. And speaking of buying a house here, a lot of people question the background here. Is this an authentic background, man? The reason why I say that is because once we move into the house, my wife actually uh, carved out a space for me. And um, initially, the space was going to be uh, the loft area, but we ended up turning that into the family room. And of course, the living room there, we just wanted, I didn't want to have my office space in the living room. So she decided to park me in the guest room here. So what you see is the guest room here, but I digress. The point is, buying real estate. You know, this is the only physical real estate that we have right now. Um, well, I don't want to say that. I would say myself, all right, because my wife is really involved in the, in the physical real estate here. She's actually, well, I'll just share right now. She's closing on a building here soon as it relates to a four flat, two four flats in, um, in uh, Chicago there. Um, so I don't know. I have mixed emotions about real estate, like owning physical real estate as it relates to being a landlord, as it relates to the maintenance of it, the taxes and different things of that nature. I'd rather just own the information, which is the mortgage note or the deed in lieu. I'd rather just own that portion of it. That way, if someone stops paying, I still get, I don't have to worry about people not paying me different things of that nature. Hence, you have the TIG investment group where we buy, we actually purchase mortgage notes and different things of that nature. Um, but yeah, this is the book that actually made me start my third business, which is the TIG legacy group. Um, Asada Moore put out a book here earlier in the year. Um, this one right here, it covers um, getting your mind right, getting your credit right. And then after you get your credit right, she has a, uh, another portion in here regarding, um, you know, getting your, getting your money right. So she actually put out a great book and it was a quick read as well. So when I say quick read, meaning like, like again, this book is only 97 pages at the most. And you can get the book done in it. this book here, here I finished in like three days at the most, but the impact that it had on here, and she's another reason why I started writing things down as it relates to uh, where I want my family to attend, attend to different things of that nature. So I have what, three, four composition books here. I have like another four in my backpack, but I actually journal a lot. But I wanna go back to something. I said I was gonna show you my goals I seen someone ask me uh, a while back, like, Marius, did you hit all your goals that you actually wanted to? The biggest goal that I had this year was to, because I'd be so busy trying to ascend to the next level, I don't call people. And it's not that, you know, that I am too busy. It's just that if it's not on my calendar, it doesn't really cross my mind much, you know, because I'm, I'm really making sure that I get to that next level. And... My family depends on it. You know, I don't, I don't, there's no wasted moves over here. <laughs> there's no wasted moves over here. Like if it's, if you're not on my calendar, I'm not thinking about you. And I, I know it sounds harsh, but I think people should have that mindset as it, re, as it relates to availability. Everyone shouldn't have access to you. Everyone should be able to, you know, pick up the phone and, and, and talk to you whenever they want to. But uh, specifically, uh, my goal for the year, um, I actually write down my goals every year. And the last three years, um, I have been using, I think I've been using this yellow one. I can't find it though. I can't find it, but um, I actually met all my goals. The biggest one was making sure that I speak to my family two times a week. So I purposely iron out, you know, time where I'm, I'm constantly speaking to my family i'm making sure that i reach out because you know family is everything family is everything and you want to make sure that when you ascend to that next level you ain't you're not leaving people behind so they actually have an idea of what you're doing why you're doing it constantly want to communicate that but i don't force my lifestyle on them different things of that nature but i kind of digress i'm kind of all over the place right now but i was primarily looking for 
my goals here um, for the year, but I can't find them. I can't find them right now. I don't even know where I so one of these books. So one of these books here, but um, the reason why I wanted to uh, to show you that is because um, the the books themselves um, was just a, a small portion of it. I actually have a book that I'm actually working on. I actually have it outlined. Uh, the most important piece here I want to touch on is as it relates to the book. I want to discuss you know my father being murdered and different things of that nature at, at an early age and how it impacted my family and why we did the things that we did and different things on nature. I didn't check this one. I didn't check all of them, but this one. All right, so yeah. All right, so here is my book here uh, with my goals. So quick thing here, I'll be looking at all that. I know I spent five minutes, I probably was all over the place. So I'll end on this. Um, in, in 2019, I called that year the year of recreating myself, okay? um which was it was crazy man it was crazy like i said reading books different things on nature that was 2019 and 2020 i call this the year of explosion um and and, and the reason why i coined it that is i didn't know the pandemic and different things was going on but i knew that me being my, my self-awareness going up about myself about my family understanding my love language as it relates to my family what they need and how to communicate I knew that this was going to be the year where I actually excelled at anything that I do, anything that I touch, I actually, you know, took it to the next level. It's not to sound any sound conceited or anything of that nature. Again, you got to have that discipline where you're, if your friends are going out to a party and you know, that's going to be five hours, you got to really say, you know what, let me stay away from that. I mean, people don't party this much at, at this age, but I'm just giving you an example for people who are, you know, listening internationally, different things of that nature, you really need to be self-disciplined and have that self-awareness of things that you need to do as it tilts that needle towards being building generational wealth. Now that's that's my goal right now. Now for every everyone else who are just floating through life, they'll bring you along for a ride, which is no, you know, no problem, but you really still have to be grounded in, in what you actually, you know, what you're doing here. But long story short, sorry, I'm all over the place. I'm just really excited. 2019 was the year of recreating myself. 2020 was the year of um, explosion. And then um, 2021 is going to be the year of expansion. So I'll be looking to do um, some hiring, uh, probably tapering into quarter two. Uh, I thought about hiring at the, at the beginning of the year. However, with the horizon, uh, with the horizon, with my baby, my baby girl do here any day now, um, I don't, I don't want to um, I, I want to be there and be present as it relates to hiring and different things of that nature as, you know, someone is carrying out my dreams and my goals. So I want to make sure whoever I hire, it aligns with them. And then I just ride my coattail, you know, just be honest. But long story short, 2021 is going to be the year of expansion. Um, but most importantly for 2020, I have four categories that I always focus on. Uh, one is financial, two is family, and there's no particular order three is health and four is business. So within the financial category, I want to make sure that um, when I pull my credit, I want to make sure I had, you know, I was getting my credit together. So my wife has built my credit for me um, because I was on a chapter 13 bankruptcy. And everybody know anything about chapter 13 bankruptcy, you have to get approval for every transaction that you're looking to um, get into as it relates to uh, finances, you know, so I had to get approval through my trustee. Anytime I got a, a, a bonus or a raise, uh, which I got a raise from my earned income job. Um, I got a raise back in March, right at the beginning of the pandemic. So it was it was crazy. Shout out to WGU. I really appreciate y'all. Um, and, and understanding the value that I bring to the team too. Shout out to the computer science team as well. But overall, um, investing my bonus and my raise. So that was something that I, I didn't have lifestyle inflation, different things of that nature. And again, all this came from in 2019, you know, if you looked at my old uh, my old post on Facebook or anything like that on Instagram, you can just tell that certain books that I was reading back then set me up or aligned me for the books that I actually read in 2020. Um, but long story short, uh, as it relates to the to my businesses, um, inspire to cultivate. I took that to the next level. Um, my personal development, the most important piece here, I wanted to find a mentor or a coach, and I actually found uh, a coach 
that helped me with my mortgage note investing, which is Desi um, Arnez there. Shout out to Desi. Uh, not to get it confused with the, uh, you know, the, the actual, uh, you know, um, I don't want to call him a singer, man, but uh, yeah, the singer, not to get him confused with the singer, but shout out to Desi um, Arnez there to take care of me as it relates to mentoring. Um, shout out to, uh, uh, oh my, I can't think of his name right now. It slips my mind, but uh, man, what's his partner name? I can't think of his name, but shout out to the ACI uh, Legacy, uh, ACI, uh, um, ACI Legacy group there overall. Um, and making sure that I read two books a month. So I make sure that I read two books, read two books a month um, as it relates to my family. You know, I have a mixed family, so I'll make sure that I call my brothers and sisters at least twice a week. Um, not not my brothers and sisters, those I mean to say that, but as it, as it relates to calling my, you know, my brothers and sisters, I want to make sure that I speak to them at least twice a week. As it relates to our mixed family, I want to make sure that I have at least try to make a fun day, different things of that nature. Um, I, I always shout out my wife because she blessed me with two children back to back. She put all her goals on hold for me. So this next year, you will probably see a lot of um, Nadia, <laughs> you'll see a lot of Nadia in, in different areas of my life there because it's time for me to reinvest, you know, different things back into my wife there. But overall, fun day, Sundays, calling my brothers and sister, which is that family portion that I mentioned. And then the last one is, uh, whoa, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I have six categories. I have six. They all go into different areas. So my six, my categories was financial, um, businesses, personal development, family, health, and 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 spiritual those are my six categories now within there i put two goals for each category okay probably think i'm making this up so let me see let me see if i can show you this what i have on the left is my uh one thousand dollar portfolio um but I'll show you a little bit here all right so that's my that's how i invested for this year all right so i'll give you those gems later so as it relates to my goals as you can see there based on the light this is hard. This is challenging, but yeah. All right. So the year of expansion was 2020 and I actually have all that stuff in there. But the biggest thing is um, the spiritual portion there. I make sure that I meditate, make sure I speak to God often and make sure I'm validating what I'm doing. So this is this looking for clarity all the time. Um, as it relates to my health, uh, if anybody know anything about me, everybody know that uh, I always say that I'm a part-time vegetarian addicted to cake and pastries but um, I really am. So I make sure that I run three to six miles a day. Uh, typically I get those done at about 5.30 a.m. And then I actually jump online real quick and do a workout with the effective uh, fitness team. And then long story short, my health is mission critical. You know what I mean? Make sure that I eat right. Now, as it relates to sweets, now, nah, I mean, look, <laughs> my name is Maurice Thomas Jr. and I'm an addict. <laughs> and uh, shout out, shout out to, uh, people who are overcoming their addictions. Uh, my addiction is, uh, you know, I'm addicted to sweets. Anything that got Debbie's face on it, and when I say Debbie's face, little Debbie, if you got Debbie's face on it, most likely I was addicted to it just from just growing up and having honey buns and, uh, you know, pinwheels and, you know, all that kind of stuff, man. So I make sure that I only eat sweets on the fourth of each month. I know it sounds crazy, but I only eat sweets on the fourth of each month. And then even some months because of my, how my taste buds are, like I, I stay away from sweets as well. Um, but from a personal development standpoint, finding a mentor was my primary goal for 2020. And I actually have that mentor as it relates to uh, building generational wealth and just establishing things. And, and since I met him and having that exposure, you know, to Desi and the team and just being around millionaires and billionaires it actually changes your mindset and it, it makes you think how precious time is you know so that goes back to what i was saying earlier i just don't waste time you know i'm always always working towards my purpose and making sure i stay aligned like i don't watch tv much and if i do watch tv it's something where um i'm spending time with my wife and I, i'm making sure that i'm present with her and just catching up on things that she enjoys you know so she has a, a few shows that i try to watch sometimes um most of the time i fall asleep but again shout out to nadia shout out to nadia uh, as it relates to uh, my business endeavors, I uh, started TIG this year. Um, I started an online e-commerce business selling um, selling joys there overall. Um, outside of that, my portfolio in real estate, in real est uh, not real estate, but in stocks, um, I actually slowed down on that portion because I started doing 
Fundrise. If, if you haven't seen that video that I uh, did on Fundrise as it relates to those investments, I started taking that money and putting it and deviating it over there because real estate is the easiest avenue for you to grow your wealth overall. And then not only that, I started taking that money and invested in my self-directed IRA and I maxed out our HSA account and the kids 529 plan. So I took that money and purposely started putting it in those three different um, 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 vehicles overall, you know, long term for my children. But yeah, I know I started off by saying I'm doing a book review and end up going here. As you can see, I actually didn't have a plan. I probably was all over the place. Um, the key takeaway um, is, is as you begin to um, think about your 2021 goals, uh, you know, start, start thinking about different avenues or different books or different things that you want to read. So the books that I have so far, uh, this one came in the other day. This one is uh, why you act the way you do. And the purpose of this is to analyze my strength and my weakness, uh, discover how God is using my gifts and then improving my, my relationship with others. If you know anything about me, I probably don't speak to people a lot. And it's not that um, I'm, <laughs> I'm, like I'm thinking I'm better than people in anything of that nature. It's just that communication is not my strong point. So, you know, this this is why I got this book here. So I try to give a, a background on why I chose titles, different things in that nature. So why why you act the way you do? So I have an understanding of myself. Now I actually had another book that just came in here. Uh, I'm not sure which one it is. Oh, this is um, my next book is uh, Limitless. All right. It's the owner's manual for your brain, you know, and that's what I like to call it, you know, upgrade your brain, learn anything faster, unlock your, um, you know, your exceptional life is what it's actually saying here. So I'm really intrigued about this book. And I actually have two more uh, that should be here any day now. And those two books are, um, I don't know if you, if you guys are, like I said, into health there overall. But when you're doing, when you're taking care of your health, you have to make sure that you, you're looking at it from a holistic approach. Again, that's why, hence, I have that book there. And I, you know, look at it, different things in nature a lot when people tell me different things. Now, the next three books or the two books that I actually have in is uh, Sleep Smarter. Um, as you can see, well, you can't see it. It's probably bright here. But Sleep Smarter um, by Sean Stevenson. And the other one is the one that just came out. His book just dropped yesterday which is eat smarter, you know? So I'm always looking for different alternative ways, not for myself, but since, um, you know, a few things I've changed in my household, when my kids come to visit me, I always tell them about eating smart, and eating healthy. You know, what you look like on the outside is a direct reflection of your self-discipline, um, if you ask me. Um, so this, uh, those are my four books for quarter one. Um, I'm not sure how fast these ones are or that I'll get through them. But this one looks like to be about 282 pages. And this one looks like it's going to be around 380. So this one probably take me around about a month. Um, this one will probably take me around anywhere about 14 to 21 days. And again, like the other two books, um, you know, I take this stuff serious overall as it relates to reading and different things on nature. Now, those who are audio learners, I, I salute you. And those who are visual learners, I'll make sure I put a copy of the books um, and the titles and different things on nature in the description of this video. But I don't want to keep going on and on and on. So I'm going to sign off. But the most important piece is, you know, stay safe, stay healthy. And uh, I'll see you back here on the next upload.